All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily World. Uh, we're joined this morning by Mr. Femi Falana, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Thank you very much. It's well, my pleasure. These security challenges and problems we face across the country, do you think is in any way connected to the Constitution? Partly so, but the increase in the wave of uh, killings and kidnapping and banditry in recent time uh, has to do with uh, the just concluded elections. Oh. Uh, the talks that were armed by politicians were not disarmed. You know, they were very busy during the elections, attacking people, killing political opponents, and the rest of them. Now they are back in business. Nothing was done to disarm them after the elections. They have been done by politicians. And therefore, they have to look for means of survival of livelihood. And that is why we are witnessing this increase. We never so, got any report about uh, the politicians arming thugs. No, 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 there are reports. I mean, I do know that the police uh, arrested close to 2,000 thugs. With arms. Many of them with arms, and none of them has been taken to court. I'm, I'm sure you are aware that, uh, of the incident in Lagos, whereby, <laughs> in the middle of the address of the governor, uh, Governor Ambody, yeah. uh, armed talks invaded the venue of the conference, disrupted the rally, but nobody has been charged to court. I mean, the, the nobody some nobody has been were, taken to the court. They declared some of them wanted. No, some of them before. are all in town. <laughs> they have been fined. But they haven't been taken to any court. And that is the situation all over the country. So why, why is the police So when you helpless? have impunity in any country, what we are witnessing is a reign of impunity. Yeah, but, but why in is... In fairness to the police, yeah. in fairness to the police, these talks are usually taken to court. They are reign for all manners of criminal offenses, including murder or culpable homicide. But, particularly when it comes to political thuggery, most of those cases are quietly withdrawn by attorneys general. In different states. Yeah, who will just file and prosecute motions. But then, it, it, this is not the first time this is happening, is it? Which, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a regular phenomenon. At every, uh, at every election? Oh, yes. Once an election has, been, has just been concluded, you have phenomena increase in, the, in violence all over the country. Does that mean that the police didn't anticipate it or the security agencies didn't anticipate it and consequently plan, you know, for such the, a thing? The system has collapsed. What the system? system has collapsed. What system? The Nigerian state has proven over and over again incapable to guarantee the security of life and property. And why is that? Oh. A number of factors are responsible. Most of your discussions are centered on the architecture of security. Oh, we need uh, to increase the number of uh, police personnel. We need to buy gadgets for them and vehicles and the rest of them. What of the social dimension of crime control? In other climes, in some countries, the number of people engaged every month productively, the number of people employed, the number of people lose their jobs, are a public matter. They are announced every month. How many people have been employed? How many people have lost their jobs? And what is the government doing about it? Couldn't this be the reason why Senator Adeyeye also raised that issue that the Constitution is... It's an, it's an albatross of sorts. No, you see, the guys with profound respect, the members of the National Assembly are trying with the security of our country. Oh, with profound respect. How? how? Now, how can the Senate in this age and time be passing resolutions asking for police, uh, state police, a resolution, or the, or the House of Reps? Requesting the president to come and address 
the members of the National Assembly on the security situation in the country, why have they not moved a motion for the creation of state police? Didn't the National Assembly... But does the Constitution permit them to do that? Because, you know, the police, military and all that, those are on the exclusive list. No, I, I'm not unaware of the fact that Section 214, Section 214 of the Constitution provides that there shall be only Nigerian police force, only one force in the country. I'm not very comfortable with the whole idea of a force because that was the colonial <laughs> creation. Mm. We should have one police service in the country. But the National Assembly and the Presidency, the National Assembly and President of Sanjo decided to establish another force. The Nigerian Civil Defense Corps with powers to bear arms. Today, the EFCC, the ICPC, the prison service, the immigration service, NDLA, and others are empowered to bear arms. How can the National Assembly continue to maintain that it is unconstitutional to have state police? Is it? Is it constitutional? Of course. Of course. How? The constitution provides that a state government can make a law. But isn't and that... the law will be respected. I, I'm just telling you, hmm. the same federal government that says there shall be only one police force hmm. has created other police forces. What stops state government then? I, mean, I, I was listening to the governor of Lagos yesterday complaining told the acting inspector general of police that there are only 33,000 police personnel guiding 24 million people. And I ask myself, where are we in this mess? The least a governor can do is not to complain. You are not supposed to issue a press statement. It's to go to Abuja. If you are not going to allow me to have a state police to take care of my people, you will either give me 100,000 police personnel to guide Lagos State. And you can do that. The Constitution allows me to defend myself, yeah, but... to defend my property. Mm. Section 33 says I have a right to life. Yeah, but what part of the law would they rely on? Section 37 says <clears throat> to... the privacy of my home yeah. shall be guaranteed and protected by the government. What part of the law would they rely on, the governors, to organize, to have their own state police? Okay. I can go to the Inspector General of Police or apply to the president that I want to have a license to bear arms. As an individual? As an individual. Yeah. And if the government finds that I'm responsible enough, I will be given the license. Now, what stops a state governor from going to Abuja? I'm applying for 10,000 licenses for 10,000 young men and women to protect everybody in Lagos. Why should it be reserved for the rich or the privileged in the society? Mm. So we have to be very innovative in the business of securing the people of the country. But we can't just throw up our hands in helplessness. What if they don't grant them the license? No, you go to court. You go to court. Oh, yes. Why should an individual be allowed to protect himself or herself and the entirety of the people be deprived of that right? Oh, why do you but, think there's a fear? The fear of um, a political undertone when it comes to state policing. So what of the federal? What of the national police now? The Nigerian police force? Is it not being used by the rich to intimidate and harass people? Or political opponents? So what are you talking about? Yeah, but Mr. Fala, if a governor can go and apply for 10,000 licenses for 10,000 people, yes. what stops me from going to go and get for 200 people? No, you, you see, it's not given for, to everybody now. Yeah, but I, there is a procedure now for saying if you are found to be responsible, they will give you a license. But why can you not give a state governor to 
secure everybody in a state. Why? But Why? if you then go there and ask for 200 license, mm. nobody will give you. You cannot, you cannot be given more than one to protect yourself. But then we we'll risk implosion. We should, we should, what of now? Where you have all manners of light arms all over the country. Rather than go that route, uh, Mr. Falano, what, what stops the... What, what can we do now? Because everyone... No, what you can do for now? As long as, no, excuse, what you can do excuse, now? Excuse me, for, for as long as... As far back as, say, 2003, 2007, I've read all kinds of articles of people complaining about the 1999 Constitution, especially concerning this you, you know, you security see, issue. See. What can we do let now see. about let, let, this? Let, let me tell you. We're giving a decree, what you call constitution. It's a misnomer. What you are calling constitution is the constitution promulgation decree number 24 of 1999, signed by, signed alone by General Abu Salami Abu Bakr. Well, it was crafted by jurists. Was no, no, crafted? which jurists? No, the military people crafted it. See, it's a replica of the 1979 constitution. By the way, we are two constitutional documents in 1979. But the Obasanjo military junta refused to allow the minority constitution authored by Dr. Shegun Oshoba and the late Bala Usman, which had addressed this problem, which had made chapter two of the constitution justiciable. If everybody is going fully employed. But you say it's minority. No, yes, you have to. Let Nigeria have the two. The majority constitution, a draft constitution of uh, uh, the group led by the late Chief Roti B. Williams. You must, you must have allowed Nigeria to have the two so that we could compare. But the minority was surprised. And the most fundamental aspect of that minority constitution uh, uh, draft document was that every young person in Nigeria has to be carefully employed. And if you are not employed, you are entitled to mm. unemployment benefit. It's in section 16 so of their own constitution. Why, why didn't the Justice Nikitobi uh, Commission take a look at that while they were looking at coming up? With no, the they were the, all those that. committees were out to, you know, uh, 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 to, were out to maintain the status quo. In 2014 National Conference, the delegates unanimously resolved that for us to have peace in this country and security, law and order, you must make Chapter 2 justiciable. Again, the report was ignored. But under the current constitution, as bad as this constitution is, I've just given you suggestions on how to go about it now. And if governors are not going to be allowed to protect the people in their areas of jurisdiction, they have the right to go to court because that constitution, the decree, has provided that I have a right to life. You have a right to life. We have right to our property. We have right to the privacy of our homes. And if you do not guarantee this right, I can go to court. Right now, I have cases. I have won cases where the courts have ordered, I'm talking of municipal and regional courts, have ordered the government, the federal government of Nigeria, to pay reparation or damages to the families of those who were killed by, either by rioters or terrorists and others. Because it is the primary responsibility of the government to protect the life of everyone. Okay, everybody. but if I could uh, interrogate a little further, if the governor goes, and assuming he gets a license for 10,000 people, they will be as individuals to protect themselves. Or no, 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 no. Protect all of us. I mean, for instance, Lagos State, the Lagos State government has set up the neighbor, neighborhood yeah. wash uh, initiative, know, yes. A program. Without permit, right to bear arms. No, they have, they have no right to. They, they went. Mm -hmm. I, I went to the address the House of Assembly and tried to convince them, but I didn't succeed, that you can get these guys to bear arms. But, but let's come to. This man good constitution. Yeah. Paragraph L of part one to the third schedule provides that there shall be a police council, Nigerian police council, 
which shall be constituted as follows. The president shall be the chairman of that body. The inspector general of police, the chairman of police service commission, and each of the 36 state governments shall be members. So you are talking of a 39-member Nigerian police council. What are the functions of that body? To organize, to administer, and supervise the Nigerian police force. Does that happen? In other words, police powers in Nigeria <coughs> are to be jointly shared by the president and the governors. But that body never meets. I've been shouting myself first to get the federal government to convene a meeting of that body or the governor to requisition a meeting of the body. Because that is the body that is empowered to supervise and organize the police force. So you can get to the meeting of that body. If that body today functions, functions can it stand the level of terrorism that we face in the Northeast, for instance? Of course. Of course. Of course. You know, you know, instead of militarizing security in the country, what we are required to do on that, that constitution is to equip and train and motivate the Nigerian police force. In fact, in the Second Republic, it was the Maitasine phenomenon, another civil disturbance that led to the establishment of the mobile force, mobile unit of the Nigerian police force. And under the Second Republic, I mean, I don't, under that political dispensation, the government had acquired enough weapons, enough equipment for the police. But what happened when you had the coup in December 1983? The armed forces impounded and seized all the equipment. And since then, since then, the Nigerian police force has never been equipped adequately. Oh. And, and even right now, we have barely 200,000 police personnel guiding 180 million people. But there's a recent scenario. I think during uh, the Benway State scenario, where there was this accusation about uh, livestock guards, that they were bearing arms, the police moved in, arrested them, they had no powers in law to bear arms. So isn't that the kind of thing that will happen if... No, I think it was only Kano State Government that challenged the federal government over its decision to challenge it to create a police force. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court struck out the case on technical grounds. Can they really go Oh, back for to sure. It? You can go back to court. And more so now that the federal government has proven it capable to secure the country. This is the time to do that. And what I'm saying for now, the governors should requisition a meeting or regular meetings of the Nigerian Police Council so that that body can effectively organize the Nigerian Police Force by insisting on mass recruitment there was a of police personnel in the country. You have to provide for the funding. Because the security vote. being claimed by everybody in the country. You ask yourself, what, who are you they securing with the votes? So the security votes should go to funding the police in the country. There, there was this uh, system that existed. So we are not as surplus okay. the, the, as we are being made to believe. In the First Republic, you had this strong regions, and it was empowered by the constitution of yes, the I, I think there was an attempt to bring the same thing back in 1995 under the Abacha government with the six geopolitical zones. Uh, but that doesn't seem to... No, have the to six change. geopolitical zones are still there. But is, it, fact, is, by, is it recognized? Oh, by yes, by law, <laughs> by the Federal Character Commission Act, the six geopolitical zones are recognized. That also means 
Contrary to what goes on now, if there are two political posts in the country, one shall go to the north, one shall go to the south. If there are four, two, two. If there are six, one per zone. And each zone must bring out the best. And this country has produced the best in all area. But the federal government and the state government violate the provisions of the Federal Character Commission Act. And that explains the crisis of building a nation in the country where you either go and bring people from your own region or your local government to run a government. Whereas section 14 of the Constitution provides that the government of Nigeria, the government of a state, the government of a local government shall be constituted in such a manner to guarantee fairness, equitable distribution of positions. Even amenities. When you've talked about the section of the constitution that has to do with providing um, welfare to Nigerians as well as um, providing um, uh, jobs, employment. Yes. For the section 16 of the constitution. <laughs> if we look at that section as to what we're facing in the country now, security-wise, you have been able to establish that because we don't have jobs, there's this increase in Many crime. young people are driven to criminality. Mm -hmm. moving and to what crime. has worsened yeah. that is the now, rate of grand corruption going now, on in the country. Now, there's also a section of the Constitution that says that uh, state governments can only have the capacity to build those jobs if they are autonomous. No, it's not quite true. It's not quite true. No. No. What will it then take for the state governments to be able to get those job figures up if they are not <laughs> autonomous? Right now, right now, efforts are not being made. There are a lot of opportunities. People go to Abuja every month. State government go to Abuja every month to collect rents. What are you doing with the rents? In terms of creating jobs in your state, in terms of getting your state to be financially independent. No, they say that the, what they get from Abuja is hardly even enough to pay salaries. So what can they do to get out of that? Would you recommend, for it instance, that to, they get, they no, remove see, that part of the exclusive see, list, out go, of the exclusive you list? You want to go there. There are problems. And I always cite the example of um, Kebi State. Every state is in the heart of the Sahara Desert, I mean the desert, which is encroaching. But that state government, in 2017, made 150 billion naira from the sale of rice alone. That the governor of that state came down to Lagos to have a joint program that will supply rice, what you now call lake rice. And I believe okay. quite some governors are addressing the Kevin uh, Ebonyi is doing that. I know Enugu State has said okay. we do no longer need to, we need to depend on Abuja we'll, we'll to come pay back salaries. To this. We need to go to break, but we'll come back and just wrap this up in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, Mr. Fallon, I'm just wondering, I mean, if state governors or states have this power, you know, to uh, empower their people and protect them security-wise, why do you think they are reluctant to go challenge some of these things in court? Or go apply for these licenses? You, you know, the state governments tried between 1999 and 2003, or 2007, the first group of governors led by the Lagos state government. When the current vice president, Professor Yemi Oshimai, was the attorney general of the state. A number of cases were won to ensure devolution of powers. Today, in the area of local government elections, local government funds, land matters, 
entertainment law, entertainment matters, physical planning, and so on and so forth, have become the exclusive reserves of the state. All those were once. They all were once controlled by Abuja. So what do they mean by devolution well, of powers? Well, you ask yourself, no, no, no. There are still areas. And for instance, why should the federal government take 52% of the revenue of the country to do what with it? When the services, the bulk of the services in the country are required to be addressed by state government and local government. I mean, I, I, I've just started a battle now against the allocation of oil blocks to individuals in the country, individuals and foreign companies, multinational corporations. Section 44 of Section 3 of the Constitution provides that the minerals, mineral resources in the country, mineral oils, shall be taken over by the, shall be acquired by the federal government. And those resources shall vest in the federal government. Nowhere is it stated that oil blocks from mineral oils shall be given to individuals huh. who will become instant billionaires. What do you think about And some this? of them will say, we don't know what to do with the money. What do you why state government, why the federal and state government are taking loans to pay salaries? What do you think about this mining, go like that. This mining situation going on in Zafar? It's the same thing. Individuals and private and foreign companies, Chinese companies, invaded some far state. And to the knowledge of the federal government. You mean the federal government knew about this? Oh, of course. And they have been mining gold and other resources to the detriment of the people. You witness in some far state environmental degradation. Mass poverty. I mean, that was a state where uh, a few years ago, about four or five years ago, only 28 young people wrote the WIAC exam. And that state will want to compete with others. It's not possible. So, where children are, uh, the government has come on this uh, a couple of days ago, no, last week, the Minister of Education announced. Oh, we now have 10.5 million out of school children. I can beg your pardon. And the government was trying to say, oh, uh, the figure is no longer 13.2. It's now 10.5. 10.5 million children who are out of school. So while other nations are putting every kid in school and in the primary school, they are learning, they are teaching them how to handle Computer. Mm. Yeah. The federal they, government it, does from not those from that population of ten point five million people, and my own figure is about twenty million. But let's accept their own. Let us accept their own figure from the ten point five million children. The Boko Haram site will recruit. Armed robbers will recruit. Terrorists and bandits will recruit. And some of them will be raped on the street. All those who are selling wares in this agent time, we are forcing children that should be in school to be selling granite, you know, even in a place like Lagos, we're in trouble. So you can't talk of security in isolation. It's a totality of the affairs of a nation. How do we get young people? Right now, we're talking of, of unemployment. How many of our state governments are doing anything to retrain many of our unemployed, unemployable graduates. Many of our people who have gone to school are not employable. You are not aware. What is wrong, Mr. Fallon? Two, two, please. This, this is very important. Okay. How many of our governments are paying any attention to vocational training? Vocational training. Today, Majority of artisans in Nigeria are from neighboring countries. Another word, 
Benin to police Benenoy yeah. and others. Because here, a young man wants to learn carpentry. After six months, he says he has, he, has, he, has, he has done his freedom. Freedom from what? He has only moved to ignorance. Now he has complimentary cards. He won't call himself a carpenter. A furniture maker. He can't make anything. But in Bene here, they are trained for about five years. So by the time the young person graduates, he knows the rudiments of the profession. So well, these are the well, problems, sir. We clearly have a job of work to do. And a lot of job. The National and Assembly have to do more. Well, well, thank you for coming on this morning, Mr. Femi Fallon, our senior advocate of Nigeria. Well, Sunrise Daily will be back in a moment. Don't go away.